The second thing you're gonna need is a pair of arms because the whole point of doing push-ups, you need to use your arms. So if you don't have arms, sorry, maybe you guys can do the leg challenge next time. Maybe there will be a 30 second squat challenge. If you don't have legs, maybe you can do the Stephen Hawking challenge, I don't know. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm gonna to be doing something a little different for you guys. I'm going to be attempting to break the Guinness World Record for the most push-ups in 30 seconds. But before we start, you guys know the drill. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, ding, ding, ding. And if you want to watch the entire video, I will be including timestamps in the description so you guys can skip ahead to the section that you want. Now, onto the actual challenge. Last week, somebody by the name of Brownie, he is a YouTuber, he ended up breaking his previous world record for the most push-ups in 30 seconds. And he accomplished it by performing 49 push-ups in 30 seconds. Well, that record did not last for very long because another fitness YouTuber by the name of Igor Vojtenko, he ended up breaking that record by completing 50 repetitions in 30 seconds. And of course, Brownie was not going to let this stand, so he decided to break his own record one more time, and in doing so, he managed to accomplish 53 push-ups in 30 seconds. Well, last week, I believe it was on Friday or Saturday, Greg Doucette, another fitness YouTuber, he wanted to break the world record as well, so he decided to give it a shot, and he managed to accomplish 56 push-ups in 30 seconds. And sure enough, another fitness YouTuber by the name of Simon Miller decided that he wanted to try and break Greg Doucette's record this week, so he attempted it, and he was not able to accomplish it. He only did 51 repetitions, which is still pretty good. That is the numbers as they stand over the course of the last week. So I am going to attempt to try and break the world record. My main goal is to break Greg Doucette's world record of 56 push-ups in 30 seconds. If I cannot accomplish 56 push-ups in 30 seconds, at the very least, I would like to break that bald ass old Simon Miller's record of 51 push-ups. Now, what exactly are we going to need for this push-up challenge? Well, first thing you're gonna need is your body because if you don't have a body, you're gonna have nothing to push up off the ground. The second thing you're gonna need is a pair of arms because the whole point of doing push-ups you need to use your arms so if you don't have arms sorry maybe you guys can do the leg challenge next time maybe there will be a 30 second squat challenge if you don't have legs maybe you can do the Stephen Hawking challenge I don't know aside from your body and arms you're also going to need some Batman underwear to give you a little bit of extra strength and because we have some Batman underwear we need some sexy leggings to put those underwear over top and once we have those ideally what you would want is you want a nice shaved head Ideally, you'd want a nice clean face and no chest hair because the less hair you have, the more aerodynamic you're gonna be and also it's gonna be less weight weighing you down which is gonna make it easier for you guys to push up. And lastly, we are going to need a toilet paper roll. The whole purpose of the toilet paper roll, ideally you wanna put it on the floor and your chest should touch the toilet paper roll on every single repetition and the toilet paper roll is roughly the size of your fist. So you want to put a toilet paper roll between you and the floor and on every single repetition, you wanna make sure that your chest touches the toilet paper roll. In terms of hand position, there aren't really strict rules with how exactly you have to place your hands or the orientation, whether they're internally or externally rotated. I believe when Greg Doucette did his push-up challenge, his hands were slightly externally rotated. They might have even been completely externally rotated. Simon Miller, same thing. I think his hands were more in a neutral position. So for me, I'm just gonna go more slightly external rotated, but not too extreme like Greg Doucette did in his video, just because when I do my push-ups, I don't really go with external rotation. That's just how I'm gonna do mine. You can do it however you want. I don't believe it is a strict requirement to break the rule in terms of your hand position and orientation. So I'm not really gonna put too much emphasis on that. And in terms of my strategy, I am going to go a little bit slower on the first three to five reps. The reason being about 10, 15 years ago, well not 10, 15 years ago, in February of 2009, I tore my pec on the left side. I don't know if you guys can see the little scar over there. And ever since tearing my pec, I always like to go a little bit slower, especially on the eccentrics. And if you've watched any of my lifting videos in the past, like when I did my three time body weight deadlift for one repetition. Or when I successfully attempted 20 repetitions with twice my body weight.
For both of those lifts, you can see that on the eccentric, I like to go nice and slow. And that's typically how I like to do all of my lifting. Whenever I do most of my lifting, I like to focus on slow eccentrics because when you focus on slowing down the eccentric portion of the lift, which is the lowering phase, that is going to promote greater strength gains as opposed to just dropping it off your chest and bouncing it. Or if you are in a push-up, dropping to the floor and bouncing back up. So that is why I have always incorporated more slower eccentric lifts into my training program, especially ever since I got more interested in powerlifting. And if you watch any of the world-class powerlifters, guys like Julius Maddox or Eddie Cohen, what you'll notice is when you see those guys do their lifts, Julius Maddox on the bench or Ed Cohen when he's doing a deadlift or a squat, they have terrific control over the eccentric portion of the lift. And most elite level powerlifters, world-class lifters, you will notice that they all have great control over the eccentric portion of the lift. The greater control you have over the eccentric portion, the greater your strength gains will be. So that's just a quick little summary of why I'm going to be doing it like that. Another reason why I am going to be going a little bit slower the first three to five reps is because whenever I do warm up my chest, it takes a few repetitions because of the pec tear to warm everything up. Even though it is an 11 year old injury, I do notice that even when I do push-ups, the very first couple reps, I still notice that it is a little bit more tender and it does require a little bit more warming up. So that's basically why I'm going to be doing a little bit slower on the first three to five reps. But aside from that, I'm gonna try and get those 56 repetitions in in under 30 seconds. I'm 100% confident that I can do 56 repetitions because I have done that pretty much every single time I've ever tried to do a push-up for reps. I've always been able to hit way over that limit. My main thing is, will I be able to do it in under 30 seconds? That's gonna be really tricky because as I stated, I like to focus more on slower eccentrics and I never really go too fast. So in terms of speed, the fastest I've really ever gone for push-ups, back in high school, I believe it was in grade nine during the fitness challenge, I did 67 push-ups in one minute, which is just over one per second. So in order to achieve 57 or more, I'm gonna to have to close to double my time in terms of the speed for the push-ups, which is gonna be a little bit different from how I normally perform them. However, this is a challenge and I haven't really tried to do any PRs in a while since I did my 20 repetitions with the 315 at twice my body weight for the deadlift. So let's give it a shot and see how it goes. All right, so because I don't really have anybody to keep time for me, I have my handy little hit timer going and I have a 15 second preparatory period to go. So that's going to give us 15 seconds to get set up. And let's go ahead and get set up for this push-up position. I believe we have to start in the up position, not the down position. So got three seconds. Guinness world record holder in the push-ups. So there we go, quite the accomplishment. I really had to force those last 10 or 15, those last 10 or 15, I don't know if you noticed, but I definitely sped up quite a bit and I did not do what I had planned on doing, going a little bit slower on the first three to five, so I did notice my shoulder was a little stiff on those first few. Anyway, managed to accomplish it, so there we go. I broke Greg Doucette's record and I definitely beat the hell out of that bald ass Simon Miller, so take that, Simon. For those of you who are used to watching my educational videos, just so you guys know, I did upload a program design video today. Today was periodization, and that was part of my three-part series on program design. Part one was exercise selection and exercise order. Part two was the science of sets, reps, tempo, time under tension, intensity, and rest periods. And today was periodization. So if you guys are interested in learning how to write your own program, I'll be including a link right up over here. You can click on that video and you can write your own program, learn how to write programs for your friends, and that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to smash that like button so I know to make more of these types of videos in the future. And if you're either new to the channel or haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell as I will be uploading new videos every single day. That's it for today's video. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you guys again tomorrow.